day of the third regular session of the 22nd Congress would now come to order. Bow our heads for a moment of silent uh, prayer. Okay, we'll call Chief Clerk. Senator Ardes. Senator Christian. <coughs> Senator Fakir. Yes. Senator Golan. Yes. Floor Leader Harper. Over of our men. Senator Conman. Yes. Vice Speaker Moses. Senator Ned. Senator Palik. Yes, good morning. Good morning. Senator Berman. Senator Romulo. Am I? Senator Rusman. This is a book. <laughs> Senator Wally. Speaker Simina. Yes. Mr. Speaker, 10 members are present. Okay, we do have a quorum to transact business. Uh, next item is reading of the journal for leader. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Move to dispense with the reading of the journal. Second. Second. It has been moved and seconded that we dispense with the reading of our journal. Those in favor say aye. 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 <clears throat> Motion carried. We now dispense with the reading of the journal. Next item, Keeper. For item five, presidential communications. We are in receipt of six, which are number. 22-170 to 22-175. Okay, assign those, uh, Chief Burke, uh, on the 22-175. Uh, uh, I'd like the uh, appropriate chairs to uh, review those uh, individual line items, uh, the request, so we can move forward on the <clears throat> supplemental budget. Okay, next item. For item number six, FSM Supreme Court communications, none. Next. Item number seven, members communications, none. Okay, next item. For item number eight, department, departmental communications, we are in receipt of one, which is number 22-21. It's a good report, Chairman Fikir. Uh, congratulations to you and your family. It's been moving forward, progressing. That's the trust, FSM Trust Fund. Next item. Item number nine, agency or governmental authority communications, none. Continue. Item number 10, state communications, none. Item number 11, State Supreme Court Communications, none. Item number 12, Municipal or Town Communications, none. Item number 13, Foreign Government Communications, none. And item number 14, Miscellaneous Communications, none, Mr. Speaker. Okay, we're now on our order of the day. Item 15, Standing Committee Reports. Do we have any reports, Chief Item number 15. Standing committee reports, we have none at the moment, Mr. Speaker. Okay, special committee reports. Uh, place your report, uh, Vice Speaker Moses. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I move that we place on the special committee report for today, 
Special Committee Report Number 22-06. Children, then. It's been moved and seconded <laughs> that uh, Special Committee Report 22-06 be placed on the uh, Special Committee Report's calendar for action. Uh, those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Motion carried. Special Committee Report 22-06 is placed. Okay, Vice Speaker Moses. So move for its adoption. Amen. Again, okay. the Congress adopts standing, I mean, special Committee report 22 06. Short resist.
Congress is back in session. Uh, discussion on the special uh, committee report 22-06. Uh, Vice Speaker Moses, can you at least just walk us through the uh, report? Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Your committee to wait met with the president uh, after our sit back after session yesterday. So we met with him around uh, one o'clock, uh, phone pay time, and all members whom you appointed were present along with president and his key staff. We were presented with uh, an agenda of five items that we went through. Uh, most of it uh, are repeats from last session since we didn't uh, have enough time to address many issues that the uh, president presented during the last committee to wait. So those items were included in this one. The first item was also brought up last session and it was included in the supplemental, proposed supplemental bill that was submitted last session but came in late. And that is to fund the chief of staff uh, it was mentioned to us that uh, the, the former chief of staff is now uh, a special advisor to him on defense and security issues. And uh, he wants uh, Mr. Falcom to focus more on JCRP uh, on his return. He's currently now in Guam awaiting the flight that's supposed to arrive uh, on the 24th. So he's wanting uh, a little bit more funding to fund this chief of staff position. And as I understand it, the last uh, chief of staff was being funded out of the JCRP. Second item was the COVID-19 update. And it was mentioned to us that uh, there are some changes to the the requirements for entry into uh, the FSM. And that was uh, the, you need to, it's required to have the booster shot. And it's also required now that you get tested 72 hours prior to entering the pre-quarantine in Guam. Also, uh, the quarantine days are reduced from 10 to seven days. And repatriation flights that will occur, three will occur this month, January 24th to Pompeii, January 26th to Chuk, January 31st to Koshai, and one next month, which is to Yap, February 6th. And it was mentioned uh, by Chairman Rusmal during the meeting, an inquiry on if we are repatriating FSM citizens and uh, paying for their quarantine in Guam. And it was mentioned that, uh, yes, we do for essential workers. And I did look at the list yesterday. They have two lists, one Pompeii State and one FSM. Uh, FSM's list, has 50 people being repatriated, most of whom are uh, embassy staff and agency staffs like SPC and other agencies that uh, work for us. Pompeii State's list had 80. Most of them are FSM citizens. And they only have a capacity of 80 people to handle here in Pompeii. So I'm interested to see how they're gonna finalize the list this afternoon. Uh, it was also mentioned that the funding that we received from New Zealand in the amount of $800,000 uh, is, is almost expended, all of it. So the president mentioned that he will include in the supplemental budget request from the executive branch an amount of $1 million to continue the repatriation or 
the allowance of FSM citizens and essential workers and those needed to be in the FSM to continue. And they also mentioned that <coughs> it costs about $100,000 a month to keep this uh, incoming flow of people into the FSM. So it was mentioned that this funding would be only expected to be uh, unexpended for 10 months. The next item on the agenda were what the president termed ODA priorities. Uh, the, the one, one was the climate resilient infrastructure for outer islands. Second one was medical diagnostic facility. Third one was Pave the Nation initiative in which the president stated that there's about 70 million or 40 million from the World Bank to fund that program. Also, a renewable energy program in which uh, 30 million is earmarked for and the vocational school, which 14 million is also earmarked for, all from the World Bank. And then the last one on that item is water security for the FSM. The next item was a supplemental budget. In the, the we received the supplemental budget this morning. However, during the meeting, what was discussed was the $1 million for the continuation of the funding for pre-quarantine in Guam and the funding needed to uh, repatriate or allow incoming passengers into the FSM. The second item that was mentioned was 250,000 for the open access entity. Uh, I believe it's the amount is to fund them for a quarter and then 85,000 for the for the ongoing uh, FSM Constitutional Convention, two million to build a two-story building here on campus uh, to house the Department of Education and the Department of Health. The fifth one was 50,000 for travel. Fifty thousand for travel, and the amount as we left, or we we totaled up yesterday during the meeting was three point four. However, the supplemental budget that we received this morning is about four point nine. So I have yet to take a look what the increases are. The next item was the. Pending legislation, I think uh, these are repeat items from several sessions until last session. The number one uh, item on that was the Freedom of Information Act. I know that we've discussed it uh, a number of times, either during session or recess. And the Cybercrime Bill, Non-Communicable non Disease Bill, the Passport Extension, which came up several sessions ago, bunkering and provisioning of vessels, penalties for importing violating prohibited plastic materials, legislation to enhance security of finances tax enforcement capacity, uh, Rome statute of international criminal court, safe release of sharks, maritime surveillance revolving fund, allowing nonprofit corporations to be chartered. I believe that one, it was left out when we did the whole uh, amendment to the FSM code. After we discussed those, or the president uh, reminded us of those pending legislations, it was asked on the uh, Northwest vessel, I think that's the Narag Matau, it was uh, mentioned by uh, Chairman Romolo on the funding for that. And uh, we were told that there are discussions being held between Department of Justice 
and finance uh, to address that. Details were not given. And then the PII uh, update, the PII case, which uh, ruled in favor of PII. And then after that, uh, DOJ filed a motion for the court to reconsider its decision and it was denied. And since then, the Department of Justice has filed a brief with the FSM Supreme Court uh, to appeal the FSM's decision. And as of, as of yesterday, I do not know, and the FSM Department of Justice did not know if PII filed a response in that case. And the lawsuit pending uh, for NFC, I think now it's a, it's a civil case uh, since the, the court, the criminal case was uh, dismissed by the FSM Supreme Court and Department of Justice is still pursuing that. And then the, and there was a settlement in another case uh, for Lian Cheng, uh, where Lian Cheng paid the FSM national government uh, 750,000. It was mentioned that PII, uh, there was supposed to be an arbitration clause in their contract. However, how it was explained to us was that the arbitration clause was inserted into the contract after it was signed and it was not approved by the president or Congress. So uh, that's why they didn't go for arbitration. The president went on to mention also uh, the airports in Ta and Waleai and that the airport in Ta, I think the company is now ready to mobilize and they're looking for vessels to actually move out to Ta uh, to start work, but they're still reviewing the contract and it has yet to be signed. The airport in Wale, I was mentioned that they are going ahead and canceling the contract and uh, they are gonna request uh, funding that was advanced to the company that was awarded the bid for mobilization and yet to date they haven't mobilized. Yeah. And also they are gonna go after liquidated damages for that contract for the Wallai airport. And I believe, I believe that's a summary of the report if, and I beg uh, members of the committee Chairman Rusamal, uh, Vice Chairman Palik, and Senator Kahneman, to please fill in the gaps where I, where I, where I failed to uh, mention anything that was mentioned during the meeting. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you very much, uh, Vice Speaker, <laughs> for a uh, comprehensive uh, uh, summary of the uh, uh, written report. Uh, any further discussion or addition? Uh, Speaker. Members, members of the committee. Let's Speaker. go with the members of the committee first. Uh, they have anything to add to the uh, report, uh, oral uh, explanation by, uh, by Speaker Moses. Uh, Chairman Rusimov. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Speaker. And I thank the good vice uh, Speaker, uh, Chairman of the committee, it did a superb job in representing Congress and the committee to the president. And the report, as he uh, orally explained, really uh, hit the nail on the head. So no supplemental comments. Thank you, uh, Chairman uh, <clears throat> Vice Chairman Palik. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Speaker. Uh, I have no further uh, comments. Uh, thank you, for, uh, Vice Speaker, for the uh, comprehensive uh, report. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, Senator Kornman, anything to add? 
uh, it's uh, it did a great uh, job. So there is no addition. Thank you. Thank you, uh, I mean, uh, Senator Foreman. Okay, now discussion from members. Uh, Speaker. Who's that? Oh, okay, Chairman Berman. Yeah. Thank you, Speaker. Good morning to you, members, and all of those that are observing, including our staffs. Mr. Speaker, I just have one simple, I guess, question. And this is regarding the $1 million for to continue the repatriation. As your chairman of health, I was hoping, uh, and I apologize for yesterday. I really did get sick yesterday. That's why I didn't show. But I'm, I'm hoping that the president will, when he asks to continue, he will come up with an option B on how we gonna, because I don't believe that this COVID-19 will go away next month or this year or maybe following year, it might become part of just like the flu virus. And if those are the, that get vaccinated will be safe, you know, maybe 90% safe from this virus. So I'm hoping, and that's the trend we're going. But for now, are we gonna keep on paying for people to come to our to this country or we're we gonna be like other countries that will require that they have uh, the proper paperwork in order for them to come and maybe get quarantined with us within three days at least. So, because one million dollar, and he said, that's for 10 months. And then the way I'm looking at the economy right now and what I've been uh, learning that funding will become scarce soon especially we have another declaration for sea level rising and all of these things within this country. So for having another $1 million for repatriation and there's no plan B, did the president says we're going to do this for another 10 months, but we already have another plan coming in or did he say anything about option B? That's my question to the um, do that. Okay, thank you, uh, Chairman Perman. Any member uh, from the committee to wait? Would you like to uh, help out our uh, <coughs> good chairman? Thank you. I speak Moses. Thank you. Uh, it was asked if there were other options, and the other option was Honolulu. And what we were, uh, what was explained to us that Honolulu is a very expensive place, but other op other options. Uh, with regards to how we uh, do our, our uh, assistance to those needing to come back to the FSM, there are no other options that were presented. So, Mr. Speaker, there was one concern that I, uh, that I missed, I failed to mention, and that was brought up by Senator Conman. Uh, with regards to people with chronic illnesses, that are unable to go into quarantine because of the need of medical attention and medication. And the president said that he's gonna look into that and see what will be available to those people who would wish to return to the FSM but cannot handle the seven day stay isolation without uh, proper medical attention and medication. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, thank you, uh, Vice Speaker Moses. Is that helpful? Uh, Speaker. Uh, Is that helpful? Yes, coming okay. from the Vice uh, Speaker or Chairman of the Committee, yes, but not yes coming from the Executive. I mean, <laughs> they need to really come up with option B. And okay. to say to include Hawaii, so that's another $1 million, $2 million. So they assist Guam and assist Hawaii. And uh, they really need to come up. I think it, it's, and it, it's been two years and it's going to be ongoing. Like uh, what the health um, uh, society is telling us that this, this will not go away. It will become, we're going to have to let it run it by its course. I mean, it's going to be part of life. So I hope that uh, we have coming up, coming with an option of how people will come into FSM. 
and, and not to cost us so much funding because like I said, sooner or later, we will have shortage of funding to help, especially the ones that is on this island that needed help. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you, uh, Speaker. Uh, Ramon? Ramon? Yes, uh, thank you and good morning to you and members and thank you very much, Vice Speaker, for uh, your tell uh, report. Uh, my uh, question is in regards to the uh, repatriation. I was hoping to ask the question before uh, Vice Speaker given the task to answer as Chairman Berman. But my question is, uh, the repatriation of citizens. Do we, I thought when we, in, it was in, the, this repatriation was initiated is to repatriate those citizens who travel and get caught before the lockdown. So my question is how, what, what's the status on all the people, citizens who have stranded? How, how far are we in repatriating them? Or are all the citizens who travel out and got cut stranded before the pandemic already repatriated back? Or are they still, we repatri we're also bringing in people who just travel out and during the pandemic and come back? Because I was hoping we would do our complete this repatriating all the citizens who have stranded during the pandemic. Then for citizens who travel on their own during this pandemic, we don't need to repatriate them. It's their choice to travel out. Okay, uh, Vice Speaker Moses, was there any discussion on that kind of prioritization of, uh, I think we did set out in uh, our uh, emergency resolution uh, the categories of uh, prioritized. Uh, it was it was people. mentioned uh, by Chairman Rusmal, and I hope that he can he can uh, supplement what I'm about to say. But they said they're they're bringing in people uh, who are diplomatic staff, staff who are uh, of agencies like SBC and so forth. And that was what I saw on the list after the meeting on the FSM task forces list for people allowed to come in. On the Ponte State side, and I think the repatriation word will not go away because looking at that list, that list had people who had to go out for medical reasons uh, some of those who went out for medical actually passed away and they are, the families are on that flight. And many of them are also students who have graduated and are waiting to come back. So they've been applying and a lot of students are on that. But I could not judge on the list of people who just went out and came back. So I don't have a clearer answer. I'm hoping that uh, Chairman Rusmal can supplement me on that one. Okay, uh, Chairman Orsimal, you care to? Uh, yeah. <clears throat> so thank you very much, Mr. Speaker, and I thank the fans. Speaker, Speaker, before you give it to Chairman Orsimal, can I do a follow-up so he can answer this one time? Uh, by all means, go ahead, uh, Chairman Romano, uh, you can interrupt. I allow you to interrupt, Chairman uh, Orsimal. Go ahead. <laughs> Thank you. No, I think we were talking at the same time, and uh, but sorry. Uh, ahead, my uh, follow-up question was: Last session, when we discussed uh, this uh, declaration, there was a report. I I don't recall if it's from the committee to wait that the national task force has reported that they have completed repatriating those that were stranded uh, during the pandemic. And when I, after the season, the members of the Chuk task force came and to uh, have a dog with me and say, the report was not uh, correct. Maybe based on the stranded citizens from Pond Bay, but from Chuk, we, we still have a lot that have not been repatriated back. So that's why I raised that uh, question, but I recall there was a discussion 
and report that it was completed uh, according to the National Task Force. Thank you. Yes, thank you. I think that was uh, in reference to those uh, repatriated to Conve. I'm not sure, but we still have <coughs> people out there. Chairman uh, uh, Ursula, care to uh, supplement? Uh, uh, thank you very much, Mr. Spiller. And uh, I will try to uh, help with some uh, comments relating to, to the issue at hand. Uh, what I came to understand from uh, the discussion during our committee to wait on the president was that the cost of uh, repatriating people back to the FSM uh, does not include airfare or, yeah, airfare on uh, airlines, but only because of the uh, quarantine areas that uh, uh, we put people for quarantine, like in the hotels. And that's why uh, President mentioned that in Hawaii, because of the cost of uh, uh, hotels over there, it's very expensive. Uh, whereas in Guam, it's not uh, as expensive. So the cost here, and that's why it's, it's not ever gonna end. As long as the government has this requirement of uh, quarantine, it's going to cost the government money because these people uh, are claiming it's not our tool, it's your tool that uh, re requires us to uh, quarantine. Therefore, pay for us to go to the hotel and uh, be quarantined for however many days you require. So the cost is for uh the quarantine areas not i don't believe they're paying for airfare and <clears throat> when i asked the question i was trying to see if they were using the money to pay for uh airfare but no <clears throat> I don't think that's what the president said okay uh, uh thank for you. the uh, yeah i think i've provided answer for both questions bigger Okay, thank you, uh, uh, Chairman Ursimal, for the effort. Uh, <laughs> okay, uh, if you, are you done, uh, Chairman Romano? Still have any follow-up qu uh, questions? Chairman Romano? Yes, there's a quick one. Was, I'm uh, hoping, like uh, Chairman Fer Berman said, to have a plan B, and but my hope is that they have, they have a, a system where they are accounted for people who were stranded outside during the pandemic and also have a system where they can identify those that they travel during this pandemic. I have an uncle who traveled out within six months and back, and I don't know how he did manage to. And yet we're paying for, it was him that he wants to travel out and then coming back. And yet- There goes your phone. For, and the others, citizens who are stranded since the pandemic are not here. So I think they, they need to have a system where they, we identify who were stranded during this pandemic. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I, will, uh, I will give it to uh, Vice Chairman Palik and then- uh, Then me uh, last. <laughs> yes, Urusimal, then Berman. Before we move on from, uh, I'll just state this. Uh, we have uh, another resolution to extend the current declaration of emergency on the uh, pandemic. And I guess that's one way, one venue where we can uh, try to uh, discuss even more whether we want to add some more languages to the provisions to uh, accommodate what uh, the concerns uh, that have been raised. Okay, uh, Palik. Yes, thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. Um, there wasn't a direct question of whether there's plan B in place, but I think the questions from the committee members uh, address that. One of the questions on sustainability of the, the funding. Uh, Chairman Berman is exactly right that um, at 100,000 a month for 10 months, 1 million, how sustainable it is and you know uh, how long we're gonna be able to maintain this. And that raises the question of um, uh, Chairman R uh, Romulo's question on the original intent for uh, repatriation. Uh, clearly the original, well, if there are some individuals who were stranded, 
I thought that was the priority. And uh, one statement that the um, president made, and I uh, stand corrected, my colleagues could correct me on that, but it seemed to be quite accommodating that repatriation will continue because there will continue to be need for repatriation of uh, uh, individual citizens, medical students, and also um, essential workers, contractors and diplomats who need to travel to the FSM. So I don't um, per se, they don't have a plan B, but uh, clearly additional funding will be necessary. Uh, so uh, we need to pay close attention to that. I, for one, I don't know how we can sustain this and whether there's a real clear definition of repatriation. Uh, so I just wanna share and I stand corrected, but the president seemed to be accommodating in his statement yesterday that this will continue. Uh, and as long as we can put up funding to repatriate our citizens, uh, uh, he will continue to allow it. Thank you. Uh, uh, other Peter. members. Go ahead, go ahead, continue. continue no, I, I, that's it. Speaker. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, okay. Uh, or Simon. No, Speaker, uh, yeah, thank you, Speaker. I, as I indicated, uh, there is no uh, fixed number of, uh, of people that need to be repatriated. The number is, uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, uh, it's uh, one that would be changing all the time because of the need to travel to and from outside of the Avesca. We have people who are going on medical, as stated, and students that need to come back. And these people need, because of our requirement, need places to, to, to uh, undergo the quarantine. As long as we have that quarantine requirement, someone has to pay for that. And that's, that's what the president was, uh, uh, sharing with the committee that we need to pay. We cannot think that students and people who went out on medical referral will be able to come back and pay for their uh, uh, quarantine in Guam before repatriating back to, to FSM. I, um, I, I, I support that. I, I thought that we were paying for airfare of you know, people from the embassies and the agencies. But what I gathered from Preston was that, no, we were not paying for those. We were only accommodating the quarantine areas. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Okay, I'll yeah. give, uh, I'll give uh, Chairman Conan before I uh, give it to uh, Berman to say the last word on this uh, particular subject. Uh, Chairman Conan, you want to add something to the discussion on yes I think, <clears throat> thank you mr speaker because i was stranded in Honolulu, uh i know we we'll discuss about the uh the pandemic <laughs> uh, mr speaker uh there's a concern about the one million dollars that we uh use for repatriation but my question is i don't know if the awaiting committee is raising this to the uh, president in regards to the uh, uh, poster, that's the requirement now. Mm. If we happen to receive the poster, all the FSM citizens, do we still need the uh, repatriation? That's that's the, the current guidelines, yeah, the current uh, the current guidelines uh, actually require poster before you can go into quarantine. But yeah. do we still need the quarantine if we receive the booster? So far, yes. That's my understanding of the new guidelines that just came out. Yeah. Okay. That's all I need oh, to ask. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Yes. Okay. Uh, Karen, Karen, before uh, we move on to the other topics. Uh, yes. So thank you very much, uh, Mr. Speaker. As your health, chairman of health, you know. Okay. I know it's been over a year plus 
that we've been doing quarantine. And to answer questions regarding repatriation, the word repatriation, we've done that. We've done that according to those who were stranded before the COVID. We've repatriated all of those that need, needed to come, come home. And um, after one year plus of quarantine that we've been, the process that we've been doing, I've actually seen and witnessed abuse. People leaving this week, coming back in two weeks. It's happening. The people in the task force, people in the government, they're using this because the fact that we will pay for them when they become quarantined, they're not paying for it. What have we learned from after a year, or almost two years of quarantine? Because the, I know that when you are tested, when you are vaccinated and tested before you enter the quarantine areas, when people who were found that they had the uh, virus, it, we all knew that it came out, they call it historical cases. So I think it's really about time that we, we made the requirement, what I've said this morning, that we should pass a law for, for you to come back to this island. If you are leaving to, get, to, to go get medical, to get medical, the government is sending you to get medical, then why not? Why not? We said those are the only ones who will come back and we will pay for it so to make sure that they come home because we know that there's a uh, virus out there, but we send them. But for those who wanted to go and come back for us to pay for them, I think it's just something that we really need to look into it again. And again, those who are found with the virus and then they came on the next flight out because it was okay, because they're, one thing they did, they, got, they were vaccinated twice. And lately now that we required the booster, I think it's okay. I think this quarantine, thing needs to go. I think our quarantine in Chuk or quarantine in Pompeii, Yap and Kushai, it's what we need to, to put money into it, to put, if it's a million dollar, then divide it by four and put it into those systems to make sure that what they're doing at our borders, they're protecting us. As long as they meet all the requirements, the needed requirements, that $1 million will be into our economy to help our health workers and our facilities and stuff like that. As your chairman of health, this is what I wanted to see. So speaker, <laughs> thank you for letting me to say the last word. And that's what I wanted to share members. Thank, thank you. you. Uh, thank speaker. you, Chairman Perman, uh, on that. Just a follow up uh, question. I need some clarification on the... Okay, uh, the Chairman Kulan, uh, proceed. Thank you. Uh, for those who are uh, referral for medical, uh, are you saying that we pay for the airfare? <laughs> no. No, you're uh, referred by Congress, so Congress pays for your... <laughs> oh, no, no, I'm just asking about other citizens. <laughs> other no, citizens. no, uh, whatever, whoever pays for their going out of the FSN, well, I'm sure that will be the same. They will be paying for them returning. Okay, so, okay. Yeah. Thank okay, you. Okay, so any further discussion on the other subjects? Not, uh, yes, uh, Spear. Uh, I'll allow uh, floor leader first and vice. <clears throat> yeah, <clears throat> thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. Uh, first of all, I'd like to join everyone in expressing uh, my appreciation to the vice speaker for the uh, informative uh, oral report. You know, I didn't have a chance to read the uh, uh, written report. As I said, my uh, sight is getting poorer and poorer. So I only depend on my ears. And thank you, uh, Vice Speaker, for the excellent uh, report. Uh, speaker, uh, mm -hmm. prior to the, uh, prior to our uh, actual uh, starting of our meeting, uh, we were kind of just uh, discussing certain matters informally. And <clears throat> I was telling those that were uh, there before our session that uh, the uh, BIA case is like the uh, situation for Donald Trump and uh, their supporters. 
they're really questioning the result of the election for US. While everybody knows that the election was done and it was perfectly done in a honest way, there was no cheat and no cheating or whatever. And yet Trump and his support, supporters still you know, continue to say that, that the election was rigged and all these negative comments about it. And the uh, good lawyers, professors at the universities, all these uh, experts in government activities uh, were saying that, you know, Donald Trump and the, uh, uh, his group are just going psycho. They're in illusion and delusion. So that's my comparison to the BIA case that we are uh, facing now. You know, all lawyers, good lawyers and uh, smart people and uh, people who are really good in government, you know, they have analyzed the uh, results of those motions that have been made by our AG office. They all say that there is no way we can win the case. And even us, you know, other leaders in executive and uh, legislature, we, legislative, we just, you know, keep buttoning our lips, not saying anything while we know. Like even myself, I'm only a layman, I'm not a lawyer, but reading all the papers and seeing the outcome of the uh, uh, whatever court has uh, issued, I can tell that there is no way we can uh, win the BII case. And likewise, we are in delusion and illusion. When can we come up with you know some kind of a discussion and agree together, executive and Congress, to tell AG that they must stop and make a uh, negotiation to you know settle the case? And even if they come up with fifteen million or ten million, let's try to settle the case and pay you know uh, yearly or whatever in what amount we can do like. If 15 uh, million, then why don't we say, okay, can we pay you for five years, three million each, each year? Instead of you know, keeping this thing going on, going on, and it's going to accumulate the uh, interest and whatever, it's just going out nonsense. Let's be acting like leaders to say no when we should say no. Let's stop when we said we should stop. I think uh, people at the uh, uh, HG office are just going psycho. You know, they're getting crazy. They know themselves that there is no way they're going to win the case, yet they keep pushing for it. That's the, the only thing that I want to express this morning because personally, you know, I don't have anything to do with the PII, but as a leader of this nation, you know, I, I look at this as a crazy thing, and yet, we keep you know, shutting our mouth, uh, not telling the AG office to stop and settle the case uh, once and for all. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Speaker. Thank you, uh, Floor Leader Harbor. Uh, uh, I wish we could discuss those kind of uh, pending cases uh, during recess. Mr. Speaker. To raise it. Uh, okay. Uh, I move for the here. previous question. Seven. Short recess. Okay, there's a motion for pre-
Congress is back in session. There is a motion for the previous question. Those in favor of that motion say aye. 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 Motion carry. Uh, debate is now closed. So let's vote. Those in favor of the adoption of uh, Special Committee Report 22-06 say aye. Aye. Both aye. Aye. Motion carried. Special Committee Report 22-06 is adopted by Congress. Next item, Chief Eric. There are no more special committee reports under the okay. Next item. For item 17, assignment of measures and communication communications, please refer to referral sheet number 22-46. Okay, uh, Chairman and members, uh, review that the referral sheet for your planning purposes. Next item. Item 18. Unfinished business, none, Mr. Speaker. Okay, next item is bill calendar. Any bill? For item 19, bill calendar, we have no bill at this time, Mr. Speaker. Okay, next item is resolution calendar. Uh, any resolution? Under the resolution, I mean, for item 20, resolution calendar, we have none at this time. Mr. Short Mr. Speaker. Third reason, subject to call the chair.
Congress is back in session. Uh, floor leader Harbour, you have the floor. We're on Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, if I may not be out of order, I move that uh, resolution 22-88 be uh, withdrawn and placed on resolution calendar for today for consideration. Second. And seconded that resolution number 22-88 be uh, placed on the resolution calendar for action. Uh, any rules to? Uh, yes, thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. I move to suspend any relevant rule that may impede our action on the set resolution, especially the rule that requires certain number of days for a measure to be with a committee before it can be withdrawn. So move, Mr. Speaker. Second. It has been moved. So those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Motion carried. The relevant rules are now suspended. So let's vote on the uh, motion to place. Those in favor of the motion to place resolution number 22-88 say aye. 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 Motion carried. Resolution number 22-88 is uh, placed on the resolution calendar for action. Okay. Uh, More for its uh, adoption. Second. It's been moved and seconded that Congress adopt resolution number 22-88. Discussion, short recess. Mingit, the uh, clerk. is back in session. Uh, now discussion on the uh, resolution uh, 88. Any discussion? If none, there's no objection. Discussion is closed. Let's vote. Those in favor of the adoption of uh, resolution number 22-88 say aye. 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 Motion carried. Resolution number 22-88 is adopted by Congress. Next resolution, Jeffrey. Okay. Some more resolution calendar. Under. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Motion to stand in recess till Monday at 10 o'clock chook time. Second. Second. Short, Short recess. recess. Short recess. Subject to call before we take it up. Short recess.
Congress back in session. There is that motion. Those in favor, uh, say aye. Aye. Uh, aye. Okay. Motion carried. Congress now stands in recess until Monday, next Monday at 10 in the morning, uh, time. Thank you.